that things like this get better with time But I still need you Why is that? You're the only image in my mind So I still see you Around I miss you Like every day Wanna be with you But you're away Said I miss you Missing you insane But if I got with you would it feel the same? I should stop. The key is not here. The words don't ever seem to come out right. <laughs> you know we gonna act up when mom's not home. Welcome back to another episode of Getting Grown. Burr, 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 burr. Sorry, friend. Um, no, this is not getting ready to be an hour of me nigging all over your your earphones headphones the ones that are attached to the wig this is just me coming to do a little intro to let you all know that this is a best of so far of getting grown we thank you all very much for rocking with us for the past year and a half damn it's been a year and a half that's crazy but we thank you all for rocking with us for the past year and a half for your contributions to the honesty box to the petty peeves for you all writing in for you engaging um, it's just been for you participating in the live shows, buying tickets, coming out, buying plane tickets. Like, what is that? You know what I'm saying? Coming for team typing fast and taking care of events. The first one in D.C., the one in New York, and then also the Woman Evolve brunch. It's just been such um, an honor to be able to to start to grow this platform with you guys. And we really, really appreciate all of you and your support and just everything that you've done to help Key and I along this journey. And we can't wait to bring you better things for 2019. You know that we're growing and we're learning, but we appreciate your patience and we appreciate your love and your grace as we do so. Every single one of you is special, even the lady who told us to do better. <laughs> but we just have a little episode, best of so far. Um, you know, a couple intro songs from your girls, you know, just screaming all over your ears. Uh, some even a little tr t some trash, um, some of those beautiful gems that Kia is able to drop during the kitchen table talk, as well as some honesty box and petty peeves. So thank you again for listening. Tune in for some of these from these cute clips and some of our favorite clips, some of our favorite discussions and what have you from the show so far. Make sure you write in. Let us know what some of your favorite moments from getting grown is so far. Um, we also want to thank our editor, Ty, who's been so wonderful. You all know that we record late at night. Well, Ty edits even later. So I want to make sure that we publicly thank him for all of his hard work. Uh, and the brand and as it's growing and as we grow our individual brands and we just love all of y'all like all of y'all just contribute to make this thing possible and successful so thank you so much shout out to everybody who supported getting grown from day one and, and it supported our family the reed kid fury crystal the friend zone friend and dustin and asante as well as me and my brother xd so we thank you all from the bottom of my heart, so we hope that you all have a beautiful new year. Make sure you cook your collard greens and your black eyed peas because we want to make sure that we all prosper out here in the new year of 2019. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into this good old show. Uh, so this is another episode of Getting Grown where we discuss the tests, the trials, the tribulations, the takes, the takeoffs, the offsets, the cardies. <laughs> And everything else that Kia will not allow me to say while she is here. Thanks, guys. Tune in. Appreciate you. It's all love. Oh, so it's the roll call, baby. It's, it's the, the roll, roll call, call, baby. It's, it's the roll, roll call, call, baby. It's, it's the roll, roll call. call. Hey, what's up, y'all? What, what you gotta say? say? Who's on the phone with Ed Lisa? Dre, well, it's Kia waking up to Ed, Lisa, and Dre giving shouts to all the peeps from around my way. And that sounds cool, and that may be. But where you call it from, Kia, what's it? Well, some think I'm crazy and others kind of strange. But whatever it is, y'all think I'm representing white, white planes. planes. White planes is in the house. White planes is in the house. My name what's is up? Jade. I like to hey. play space. My favorite hey. drink is lemonade and Kool-Aid. 
Hey, ooh, wee. <laughs> that sounds good. But where you from, Jay? What neighborhood? It's that girl from the land of the kings, Brooklyn. Y'all, you know what I mean. Hey, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Everybody. Yeah. Rock your body. Yeah. Everybody. Rock, rock your, your body. body right. <laughs> Why are we singing Backstreet Boys, though? We sure are. It's a small world after, after all. all. <laughs> that old nasty vibrato. Mm, it's gross. a small world after all. <laughs> Yeah, man. We just, <laughs> like, like the world is, is crazy small. It is. And what makes it even smaller, so my, my co-worker is actually one of, the, um, one of the organizers as well. He is also John Legend's first cousin. So he that was in, he probably got good Baptist vibrato as well. Oh, sis. Oh, he be, he be Pentecostal. Day. Pentecostal. And they be... When the morning comes. <laughs> he be, he be hum diddy diddy around It'll the office. <laughs> It will be all <laughs> oh one day. Say a roof for my love. Say a roof for a moment to be with me. Say a roof for my love, just a little. Save a little for me. We're not gonna talk about John Stevens on my watch because <laughs> I enjoy you save him. a little. I love John. What you talking about? Listen, and he sings live, and he sounds like his voice has been digitally mastered. Does I want you to know it? Sis, so. he sang at the con at the conference. Woo! I was at. I told you. I I always tell the story about how I almost got put out of the Merryweather Amphitheater. <laughs> At the concert because I was like, do y'all hear John? John is singing. I don't know what you came to do, but John came to sing. <laughs> they was like, shut up. I was like, be mad if you want to, but that nigga is singing. <laughs> they were so ready for me to go. But I was like, like that lady who was next to my dad at, at, at the last Luther con uh, last. I was about to say conference, the last Luther concert that he went to. Oh, he said man. there was this lady. He said there was this lady next to, and my dad. F- so full disclosure, I am not on pitch. Kia is, and so is my father. My father can sing down. <laughs> he sounds like Jeffrey Osborne. <laughs> so my fave. So um, uh, can you woo, woo, woo? one night I <laughs> loved a stranger? Complete any sentences tonight, please. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have a song on my heart, but. Uh, he was at this Luther concert, and so he was singing along, you know, huge Luther fans, and the lady next to him, ah, Luther! She's speaking, she's screaming the whole time. It because was, sometimes the spirit just moves you in a way which you just have to just give God the praise right there. That's how wait. I felt. Because, you know, as, you know, singers, people who are, I don't even want to say it like that, but there are certain things that people who sing hear that I feel like other people don't hear. And and um, I don't know. It's just like a different. It's a different kind of appreciation. I think because you have a a sense of the talent and the skill that it takes to do certain things. Like some people, because people like John Legend and Nita Baker, like they just make it look so easy. Effort. You don't. You don't realize the fact that you know they have such a level of control and tone and that takes work you know so I just that kind of when you have that kind of balance to your mm. to your voice mm. I just don't know how I'm supposed to sit there and be quiet the jealous well this it's lady a- was screaming so loud to the point my father said Luther stopped the show show and said Shanene <laughs> um, well she was probably doing too much she Jocking. was doing three much okay she was doing three much, but my father, and then she turns to my dad and she was like, You can sing too. <laughs> oh, bless her heart. And she her probably parts. hadn't been out in a long time. In a long, long time. Didn't tuck me in real tight. She turned my nightlight on in and kissed my face goodnight. My mind would fill with visions. Oh, what perfect paradise. 
She told me everything. She she said he'd be so nice. He oh my God. A place or said, Take me away one night. I'd be so happy with him. We'd rain clean out of sight. The story ends. A story's too. Reality steps into you. Hey, I don't, I don't know what, the, what was that, sis? Was it Anita? You didn't see us away. Well, the thing is about Anita Baker is you were enunciating. So. <laughs> Oh, you're I right. love my mama, I need to be. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A lot more slurry. We're going to need a lot more of words just flowing into one another. Because I'm of the belief that one can actually sing an entire Anita Baker song without closing their mouth. I have done yeah. this before. Let me give you a brief example. <clears throat> yes. With my heart, I love you. I did not close my mouth. Yes, not close her mouth once. Because you can see, and everyone knew what I was. You know what I'm saying? We love you, Anita. We speak your name. We do. You are a legion. Yes, I do. You are always allowed to bring the potato salad. Yes, and I know. I just feel like Anita Baker got a whole suitcase full of golden hot flat irons. Oh, absolutely. Oh, Marcel's. Listen, Marcel's. and all of the, like, they, they probably, like, half broken. The handles is falling off. She's got the big, like, uh, uh, what is the thing called? The big iron thing. You stick them in. You make it real hot. The iron. That's right. That's what oh, it's okay. called. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the clickety the the black clack. Martha, or oh, the stove is what it's the called. Stove. I think. Right, the stove. Um, but yeah, man, Anita Baker. It's a it's a perfect day for Anita Baker. It's overcast and cloudy. That's it. And I just this fairy tales just resonated with me just on today. There's no home <laughs> in this world. <laughs> She was yawning. Uh-huh. <laughs> She's like a long yawner. All I just love you, <laughs> and I have. Listen, my <laughs> Baker catalog is. Ooh, you all right, sis? You want to drink some water, or something? <laughs> My gosh, <laughs> I have not even greeted the people. Praise okay. the Lord, niggas. How y'all doing? Mm. Yes, sis. I don't want you to oh, die. Over there. Yeah, I'm working on it. I don't... Oh, All right, I'm strong. I'm strong. What's up? <laughs> Basura is trash time. So, yes. in our trash this week, we find out that Clifford, not five nine Harris, has been charged with three misdemeanors. <laughs> Who said Clifford was that, five nine? He did, and I Quinn. have seen him. And I, Quinn, I know my, Quinn. I know I'm blind as a rat. Quinn. Oh yeah, he said, he said five nine with the soul of a six foot nigga. Five nine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is he count as mm-hmm. inches or centimeters? <laughs> <laughs> He he must have been fifty nine centimeters tall. That's what he meant. That's the only. Yes. That's the only uh, logical, <laughs> rational explanation for a sent for a statement like that. Because the thing is, I know I'm blind as a rat, but I see where you stop, my nigga, and I know it's not at five nine. I've not been I'm in the five same five. room. I've not been in the same room with Ti ever. How uh, how however, I do believe that uh, that is a lie. I have, and that nigga is not 5'9". I'm 5'5". Five five. So is he, 
and his lady is 411. Ain't no anyway. way. Exactly. Tiny is like not even five feet. And if T.I. No, was 5'9", come on now. Stop playing no. in my face. No. Right. Is he going to he jail? He really is lying. No, uh, um, he's not. He's not going to jail, he, but he has been charged with three misdemeanors after allegedly assaulting a security guard back in May. Um, mm. So it was a situation where he couldn't get into. He, he was they wouldn't let him back into his gated community, uh, and I think he was charged with some some drunken disorderly conduct and a few a few couple things. But uh, most likely, he will not be facing jail time. But he still needs to stop lying to us about how tall he is. What an angsty little man. <laughs> So the succubus got on stage Whom? and gave Madonna oh. um, because I'm convinced that she and the Olsen twins are th- all three 1,000 years old. What on earth? She First of all, she got up there dressed like uh, she was about to sing Blackbird singing in the dead of the night. <laughs> and... <laughs> I was just trying. Collector. I was trying to figure out why she needed to be dressed like Johnny Depp. Like, what is girl? What are you giving? She gave me like, uh, you know, Erica Badu with two with cream and two sugars. Like, girl, <laughs> would you not? I was like, since when does um Ooh. this? Since when does Madonna dress like Mother Nature? I just it was troubling to me because. Yeah. And she claims I, I, that I know where it came from. she claims that um she was asked to go up there and present her award, I guess for the other for the little girl that won. What's her name? I don't know, child. One of them. Um They're all the same. Mm-hmm. It's like Kaleida P. What's her name? Kaleida <laughs> P. Jones or something. I don't know. <laughs> how, to, how to kill a mockingbird. I don't know what the child's name is. <laughs> <laughs> can't can't go on. <laughs> her name's Calamine Lotion. I don't know what her name is. <laughs> but... Ch- Chameleon. <laughs> <laughs> Cash money for the nine nine in the two thousand. I don't know what I don't know what the girl's name was, but Madonna said she was asked to just go up there and present that award, and she she elected to take the time to share her story. About herself as it relates to Aretha Franklin, it was not herself. <laughs> herself, herself. That's why I was very particular, herself. very particular about how I phrased that because the story was very much about herself as it relates to Aretha yes. Franklin. Herself Ooh, in relation, herself. not even to Aretha Franklin, but herself in relationship to an Aretha Franklin song. Okay, I mean, whatever. We were watching it and Tristan was like, where is this going? I just I was first like, of all, I don't know. I, said, I can't. I can't. I want her to I just want her to go. And furthermore, the story is a lie because Madonna is one thousand years old. Exactly. And I was just praying. I actually wasn't even really listening to what she was saying. I was just praying if she I was praying she didn't break out into song. Cause I said on Twitter. I said, if Madonna starts singing, I will snatch my television cord right out of the wall. I won't watch this television ever again. If she starts nope. singing anything. I'm going to be like Lourdes, her daughter who she wouldn't let watch TV. <laughs> exactly. Yes. I am. I actually refuse. And then she mm-hmm. wanted to cry and pout to Lenny Kravitz because the people have been um, upset at this excuse of a, of a tribute. Um, that you did a very doing. white woman thing. You got up there to... To to shout out a woman who has done so much for music, and you talked about yourself, and then you cried when people called you out about it. You cried, and we all know that if white women are known for nothing else, they are known for their tears. Um, yes, and following their actions, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like it's like let me be trash and let me just do all manner of disrespectful, marginalizing, offensive things, and then when you tell me about it, I get to be shocked. And oh my God, <laughs> I get to cry and become the victim after I just victimized you. It's fine. Right. We don't have to it's go okay. there. That's a whole nother show topic. But in any case, Ooh, like you said, the succubus. <clears throat> the succubus. That's exactly where she is. We can just cancel her since she want to wear her uh, macaroni necklaces to the VMAs. <laughs> uh, her, RV, her RVG macaroni Her RVG necklaces. macaroni necklaces and her friendship bracelets. She felt like that was appropriate, mm. so... I mean, and her sister lock braid huh, brown. Huh. Um, I wept. Uh, yeah, that really upset me. 
But that's enough of that. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I really didn't want to go running for two and a half miles (laughs) and really five miles round trip. But again, I'm in a different city. You know, I've been saying that I want to work out. I have no excuse as to why I said no. So we got up and we did the run. And it was a really nice run. We we ran by uh, MacArthur Park, which is the park where Jazzy Jeff told Fresh Prince don't go on the episode where where uh, <laughs> the episode where look at this, look at this well, nigga trivia. I know, yeah. always the tangents, <laughs> always the tangents. Mm-hmm. All right. Anyway, ran by MacArthur Park. You know, saw the swap meet, like ran by <laughs> all the like Korean like town. Like a land, you make sure you got by the swap meet. Right. Wait, and, and apparently MacArthur Park is also the park where Carly Red got fake proposed to by Life Jennings. Can you please continue on with the story, please? I've had enough of your useless nigga trivia. Please. Please. Support for today's show comes from Thrive Market, an online marketplace that's on a mission to make healthy living easy and affordable for everyone. You'll get access to thousands of the best-selling organic foods and natural products at 25 to 50% below traditional retail prices. Whether you're vegan, gluten-free, or feeding a family, you can choose from 80-plus qualities to get everything you need, including, listen to my favorite things in the world, non-GMO, fair trade certified, and BPA-free. Your girl likes to be free of the toxins. For more organic almond butter to lavender essential oil, Thrive Market carries everything you need. They have pantry staples, cleaning products, sweet treats, the best snacks, and much more at an affordable rate. So I told you all that I absolutely love Thrive Market. And I don't just love Thrive Market for the mission, which I love the mission. Like the mission is my favorite part of the entire operation. The fact that within the mission that uh, a, a, that it's... I just love it. It's my favorite thing in the world. (laughs) It's my favorite thing. On top of that, I just, the zero waste packaging, I told you all how I really love for my recycle bin to be as clutter-free as possible. The zero waste packaging helps that to be a possibility. And then on top of that, I love to burn essential oils. Like that is my jam at night. I love an essential oil. I've got many diffusers all over my home. And so Thrive Market allows me to be able to purchase my my lavender essential oil, my cleansing essential oil. Like it's just beautiful. So make sure you guys hit up Thrive Market for all of your goods. And don't forget the snacks. You can get your crackers to go along with your almond butter, which is what I put in Noah's lunch for little snacks. Like, it's absolutely lit. And now with our special link, Thrive Market is giving you an extra 25% off your first purchase plus a free 30-day trial. That's 25% off the already low prices that Thrive Market offers. Just go to thrivemarket.com forward slash grown to access this discount. So I wanted to, you know, like you said, go to the next question in terms of like, deciphering feedback from criticism, but also how do you make sure that you don't lose yourself? Like what are some of the things that you're doing or you've been able to do for it to kind of keep you clear about who you are and how you want to exist in your career, despite all of the advice and suggestions that people give you? Honestly, I think um, solitude <laughs> to me is like where people gain their streak of genius. The thing about feedback as helpful, like you said, as useful as it can be, it's also people's projections based on their circumstances. Mm-hmm. You know what right. I mean? And and not to get all like preachy or whatever, but I'm channeling my trajectory. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm going as I go. Like I listen to God, I pray. I'm channeling the next steps. So feedback isn't always useful because even if someone means well, they don't know what I'm channeling. They don't Mm -hmm. understand the story that's unraveling for me. Mm -hmm. And so while they might have a picture based on their story or people around them or what they want for me, it can actually be detrimental to plant a ton of seeds. You know what I mean? In my direction, when in reality, all of us, even sitting here, even people listening, we, I'm not following a formula. Mm -hmm. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Like I'm not, you know, people tell me, Oh, the next step, you got to do the book and then do this and then do that. And it's like, 
that's going to happen, I'm sure, because I am drawn to it. But in my heart right now, I don't feel that. And every step for me has to be felt. That's the only way I can move forward. Like, I'll sit and think, does this feel good? Even with everything I do, that's why I left YouTube, because it didn't feel good anymore. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It didn't feel... I no longer felt connected. Mm -hmm. And every step I take... I'm super mindful of how my body, even like on a physical level, on an emotional level, spiritual level, I pay attention to the subtle energies that mm -hmm. let me know this is good. You know, this is where you should be. I feel like I'm thriving. I can feel that I'm growing. And sometimes you can get confused because things can be challenging and you might take that as I shouldn't be doing this. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you need to learn to read through what challenges are actually helping you break through to the next step, you know? So there's a lot of deciphering, a lot of processing. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I choose solitude because there is a lot of deciphering and processing that I need to be doing. And I don't really, that's why like feedback is not always my favorite thing. Cause mm -hmm. I, sometimes I'm like, thank you, <laughs> but I'm figuring out what Fran was put here for. Mm -hmm. And you don't have those steps right. because they're not for you. Right. You know what I mean? So I guess my advice would be consider the source always. And it's always a case by case basis. You know, like I have some friends that they give me incredible feedback and I love them and I trust them. And I know that if they're giving me feedback, which they rarely do, but if they are, it's always with the best intention at heart. But even that I still take as a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, friend is the feedback I need to be listening to. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. It's like you have to have a, a sense of self. Yeah. Because without that, you can literally be whatever people, people can choose who you are. And that's mm -hmm. a dangerous place to be. Oh, it's so um, dangerous. So dangerous. Because it puts you in a box. It puts you, it, and I know that's also like used so much, but it does put you in a box. Like I'll have people hit me up and say, I think you need to come up with a sample catering menu so that we can just give your information out to people and let them know kind of what you're, what you offer. And I have to let people know that's actually not how I work. You know, I'm not here to boring. make big pans of rice and peas and fish <laughs> right. and, you know what I'm saying, like broccoli and give it to you because like I could anybody can do that. Right. But I want to make dishes that people really want to eat. Mm -hmm. You know, anytime that I've watched any cooking shows, anytime I've, I've read uh, recipes, I've watched videos, whatever. I'm like, I will look for the things that I want to eat. And so I, that's the kind of content that I want to put out. And that's the kind of food that I want to put out. I want to put out things that people truly want to eat, which is why I do consultations this is why I sit down with people. I'm like, what are you like? What are you really like? Are you going for a street food theme? Are you uh, like, a, are you doing that? Are you going for something more elegant? But it's fun to be able to play on those menus on what people want. And I'm, I can't do that when I'm offering you a pan of curry shrimp for $95. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like if you shrimp. want curry shrimp, then we can talk about curry shrimp, but I'm not just going to offer you six options and that's what you have to choose from. That's not how I want to work. And you prefer to flow. And I think absolutely being in flow to me, that is, and, and my interpretation of flow is channeling. Mm -hmm. You know that when I'm in flow, that means that I am completely receptive to the yeah. and yeah. that I'm supposed to be taking it. Right. And that's why you prefer that than to just create a generic <laughs> list right. that doesn't allow you to channel what what I really yeah, want to do. What the evolution of Jade as a chef. <laughs> the evolution of Jade as a chef. <laughs> yes, indeed. The evolution of that. That's like the that should be your book title. That's going to be my cookbook. The evolution of Jade as a chef. <laughs> Dedicated to Franiqua. <laughs> Equal. It's so rigorous. <laughs> <laughs> very rigorous. It. That's the name of the book. That's, That's it. it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's so key, right? That's so key because, like you, you said, channeling or being like just like to stop and listen. Just, I guess I keep going back to that point because. That really punched me in my face when you said that, like solitude and being mm. being comfortable with hearing, um, you know, like being led of yourself, being led 
or being led by what leads you. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I remember, I don't know where I got it from. I probably heard some preacher say it or something, but it's like, we often pray for God to give us direction, but we don't ever stop and listen or stop and take Hello. it. Hello. <laughs> so, it's really it. so, and you have to, there's something to what I've learned in my own kind of faith walk and growth process is that you have to have that time by yourself so that you can know how God's going to talk to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because the way he talks to you may not be the way he talks to everybody else. And you have to be able to hear him to know. Cause I, like I say now, I only want what God wants from me. Like I appreciate what you think would be helpful or useful or what would take me to the next level. But I don't want anything that's not mine. Thank you. Nothing yeah. that's not for Kia. And that's right. exactly it. That's exactly, exactly my point. And I, and honestly, as soon as I feel myself asking, because you know we all ask that question of God, what's next? Mm-hmm. And it never fails that when I get to the point where I have to ask what's next, mm-hmm. is because I haven't sat still for an answer to come to me. That's it. It's yeah. always correlated. Mm-hmm. It never fails. Right. And so now I've learned. Like to create that stillness for the answer of what's next to actually come through. That's one thing that I always, I always, like that's the one thing that I had. And it, and it, it always came across um, when I was younger as just being stubborn. Um, right. And people take it that way. Oh, all the time. You know what I'm saying? My mother drilled. She was like, yo, you need to go to nursing school. Like you need to go to nursing school. You're always going to be able to have a job. You're you're going to be able to travel. You can make six figures. You can do this. You're always going to be. My mother also drilled in me and my sister. Always be able to take care of yourself. Like if you want to get married, that's your prerogative. But always be able to take care of yourself. And while and that's where I took key. That's where key is. You know, grandmother's advice comes in. Mm-hmm. Eat the meat and spit out the bones. And it's like. I took what my mother said as far as always wanting to be able to take care of myself, but I can't do that in a way where I'm not feeling fulfilled. Right. You know what I'm saying? Do, it in the way do you want, want me to. giving you shots? No. <laughs> Nobody wants me giving them <laughs> shots. You know what I'm saying? It it's just, <laughs> I'm like, all right, it's time to take your blood. <laughs> like <laughs> blood. <laughs> like, it's just, yeah, yeah. Um, it's not, you don't want me giving you shots. I don't want to give you shots. No. So like we don't need to do this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I just anytime anything didn't feel right to me, I couldn't do it. If it wasn't settled in my spirit, I couldn't do it. And people have called that stupid and they've called it all kinds of things, but I've had to listen to myself because I'm the I'm the only person who has to live with me. You ain't got to live with me forever. I have to live with me. And if I don't like what I'm doing, I'm not going to be a nice person. And I think people don't realize that when they're miserable and unhappy, it stifles them in so many other areas in their life. And it translates in how you communicate with people, and what you do. And so I've always had to listen to that little thing that's like, that's not for me. Mm-hmm. Or if it is for me, I'm going to go after it. Sometimes you get doubtful. You know what I'm saying? But you know when something is not yours. Like, you know it in your gut. All right, boys and girls, men and women, cats and dogs, hamburgers and hot dogs, <laughs> peas and rice. We're back at the kitchen table, and we're excited because we have a guest. We do. Oh, my gosh. Kia is geeking. <laughs> Beyonce is in the studio. <laughs> oh, whoa. <laughs> the Beyonce of higher education. <laughs> and I'm just trying to be a young Cardi B. That's it. Yeah. So, I'm very excited because the one and only Dr. Lori Patton Davis is joining us today around the kitchen table. Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh, Thank we're going to have so coming. much fun. Uh, Dr. Davis is a professor of higher education at uh, Indiana. Indiana University. University. Mm-hmm. Um, and she is the current president of the Association of the Study of Higher Education. Mm-hmm. And we are geeked to have her Hype. at the kitchen table today. <laughs> Boots. We're, we're going to have some conversation just about um, Lori and who she is and her work, the awesome work that she's doing centering on uh, the perspectives of African American in, in African Americans in post secondary context. Um, and just, you know, all kinds of good stuff. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So we'll start. Um, welcome. Thank you. I'm Rubik. happy to be here. Oh my gosh, we're so happy to have you. I'm going to allow you to introduce yourself because I probably couldn't do it any justice anyway. So just tell us about who you are, of course, Dr. Patton Davis, as Dr. Patton Davis, but who is Lori? 
Oh, wow. Let's see. Lori is a black woman, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, born and raised in East St. Louis, Illinois. Mm. And I am a mom of two bomb-ass kids. That's it. Parker and Preston. (laughs) Yes. Wife of my husband, Tobias. Mm-hmm. Um, Come on, I man. am a scholar yes. of higher education research. Um, I study the experiences of black women and girls throughout the educational pipeline. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think a lot of my professional reputation has come from studying issues of race and racism in higher ed. Um, yeah, so scholar, researcher, um, public speaker and now president of Ash, which uh, since last year uh, is now Ashe. Yes, because it's so extra black oh, these yes. days. Ashe, um, change has come. That's right. Change has come. Because we don't even be known as Ash. <laughs> right. We don't even be, be Ash. Ash. <laughs> but uh, this is not Ash. She. This is Ashe. Ashe. Yes. <laughs> Y'all better sit down, down. <laughs> right. And have, you know, get comfortable in that. But I'm, yeah, that's awesome. You're the president of Ash. Let's talk a little bit about that right okay. away. Okay. Um, I was just curious in terms of, like, what does that mean? Tell us about what the job is and okay. how you got it. Was it something that you looked to do? Was it something it, that you wanted? Or is it something that just happened? It kind of just came. So um, Ash has been a really interesting uh, intellectual space for me. Um, most folks uh, who are, you know, going through um, higher ed doctoral programs are encouraged by their mentors to go to ASH or mm-hmm. whatever for, for professional development. But I was working full time uh, doing my PhD, so I wasn't into ASH. Right. I didn't go until I got a faculty job. And um, I mean, I went, I enjoyed it. And while I was at ASH, just my network started building and I found a space that really uh, supported my research and work that I was doing. And so I would say maybe around 2010, I got the Ash Early Career Award, which is, you know, a a, a big deal or whatever. And I was the first black woman Mm -hmm. to to get that Mm -hmm. uh, award. And now with this presidency, I'm the first black woman Mm -hmm. president of Ash. And so... (laughs) Um, Beyonce's in the building out there. (laughs) Hold I only have a year, but I'm trying to turn Ash out. Absolutely. Um, And so basically, um, the president, you know, we do governance related things, but the chunk of my work is around the conference. And this year, the conference theme is Envisioning the Woke Academy. Woke. And uh, I selected that theme, not with trepidation, but with a little hesitation because I'm like, okay, we got all these older people. Mm -hmm. They ain't going to know what woke is, but they're retiring. They're moving on. Uh, And one of my biggest critiques of higher ed uh, in, in my research is around the fact that higher education ain't woke. You know, Mm -hmm. when we think about the inequities uh, in society, higher education has a major role in a lot of what we see. And so I my goal was to really come up with a theme that would encourage our members to think about the critical nature of our research. Are we asking the right questions? Are we centering people? Are we using people and talking about their lives and then dismissing them? You know, like just really be critically conscious about uh, the research that we promote. Right. And so, you know, how do we get in touch with history? Like a lot of institutions are sort of trying to reckon with their um, past ties to slavery. Mm-hmm. And that's a really, you know, big step. But mm-hmm. there's a whole bunch of history that needs to be unpacked. Um, <clears throat> And so that's really what the theme is. And I'm trying to create a space that's more community engaged. I think higher ed is really an insular Absolutely. space. And so how do we do work that feeds the community, that serves the community, that centers uh, voices that are typically invisible when we think about higher ed research? That's amazing. What did you? What was your major in undergrad? Oh, um, I had a major in uh, speech communication with a minor in sociology. Okay, sociology yeah. as well. Hello, I twin. love sociology. On, <laughs> <laughs> but what? Well, how did you get into higher education? Well, with our field, usually, you know, if you're really involved as an undergraduate, mm-hmm. I'm in a sorority, mm-hmm. homecoming queen, doing all this stuff, mm-hmm. and just really involved on student government. And I didn't know that higher ed was a field right. that you actually could, could work yeah. in, right? Mm-hmm. And so I ended up doing my master's degree in student affairs and then uh, my PhD in higher ed and 
I didn't plan to be a faculty member, yeah. but I had a black woman who said, you need to be a faculty yeah. member. We need to see more of you in the classroom. Ooh, that sounds familiar. Uh, yes, Mar- Mary Hart <laughs> Hamilton, shout out. Um, yes. Uh, so she was the one who was always there encouraging me. I remember I met her when I was doing my master's program, and I'm in this room full of white people. Mm-hmm. And they do this thing where, Stressful. you know, right. <laughs> all, all, all the students who are visiting, they get to stand up and talk about where they're from. Mm-hmm. Most people don't know where East St. Louis is. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I stand up and I'm like, God, I don't want to do this. Nobody's going to cheer for me. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody else from Chicago <laughs> and all these places. And Mary was the lone person, gave me a standing ovation because oh. she's from Alton, Illinois, which is right next right. door. And so Good. she was one of the first people within the higher ed space to sort of validate me and, you know, validate me being there and in, 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 in that space. I, you know, got the degrees and kind of got nurtured into this faculty pathway. And it's been good so far. And I'm sure as a Black woman that has led you to these other passions. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Experiences and so forth. Mm-hmm. I love it. I'm, I'm grinning because I feel like Jay was saying it's familiar because, you know, we've been friends for a while and Mm -hmm. she's watched me kind of figure out the pathway Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as well. And it's been awesome to have models like you, my chair, Sharon Mm Friesbritt and Kimberly Griffin and, you know, all of the countless other women Mm -hmm. um, in our field who are doing this amazing work. Who we get to come and engage with at these kind of conferences, at these spaces, but when we get to our campuses, we find ourselves by ourselves yeah, a explain. whole lot. Even in that, even in that though, um, I think that we are kind of growing in number as a population of Black women, specifically in this field and in many fields. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to talk more about you as the first Black woman to Ash, mm-hmm. and it being 2018. So I'm just wondering, like, you know, do you feel like? Why is it just now? <laughs> like mm-hmm. having having it, it's, it's taken us a while to get to have a, a black woman in this seat. Mm-hmm. Um, and what do you think that's about? <laughs> <laughs> Cricket. Exactly. <laughs> I'm sure there are a lot um, of reasons. But 2018 just, don't mean shit. If right. we're just gonna be real, that don't mean nothing. Uh, clearly not. <laughs> I'll get, I will give Ash credit in that I'm not the first woman of color. So there right. have been uh, maybe two or three Latino mm-hmm. presidents. Um, and two black man presidents. Yes. But I mean, in every um category we think about black women are often, you know, thought about last, mm-hmm. like the afterthought. Mm-hmm. And so um it's not surprising to me that it's taken to twenty eighteen. Um and honestly, I don't know who the next yeah. I, I I hope I'm not the last. Yeah. Um but I th- my feeling is that um, whether it's higher ed or any field, you know, black women, you know, I look at black women as possibility models. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I'm doing in this role. I don't, aside from talking about racism and heterosis patriarchy, mm-hmm. I don't know why else, you know, <laughs> black right. women, you know, would right. be last. Uh, we should be first. We huh. are first. Absolutely. People just don't know. Um, they know. That's why they keep trying to copy us. <laughs> they just don't want to admit it. I mean, <laughs> love who we are, but don't love us, exactly. right? Exactly. So, um, you know, it's taken a long time, and I'm just going to try to do the best I can in these next several months to... What is it? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Slay. Slay. Yes. Slay. 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 Beyonce's language. That's Slay. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you are her. She's you. <laughs> One and the same. So since we're talking about black women, mm-hmm. you know, we've discussed the different tropes that are oftentimes, you know, placed mm-hmm. on us. Like mm-hmm. strong black women trope, the angry black women trope. Mm-hmm. We've talked Jezebel. a lot. Of, yeah. Mm-hmm. We've yeah. talked Jezebel. a lot about that. Um, and And how, you know, we have to kind of carry these things throughout our our daily lives. And I'm just wondering, like, you know, I'm going to take a personal privilege to ask for my own advice. It's like, even within the space of of our field, um, I felt pressure from, you know, white people, but also from other black women Mm -hmm. and other people of color, um, you know, that feel that, that, that like to tell me how I have to exist in this Mm -hmm. space, uh, you know, in order to have some level of success, Mm -hmm. you know, Kat and I work in the practice and policy space versus, you know, being traditional mm-hmm. faculty. And that's a thing, you know. And I'm, I like to be myself. I'm from New York. I, I wear long nails. I'm bracelets and 
I got blonde hair do right you? now, and yes. I do what I want to do. But mm-hmm. I ha- it has gotten back to me that some people have felt away mm-hmm. or felt like, or even me having this podcast, I wonder about if that compromises the integrity of my scholarship or how people perceive me. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if you could speak to some of those things, because a lot of us are in these in these spaces and feeling and dealing with this pressure mm-hmm. um, and trying to figure out how how do we maintain ourselves mm-hmm. and you know take care of ourselves, but still you know reach the goals that we've set professionally. Right. Um, so I've been lucky enough. So I had a black woman mentor Mm -hmm. in, uh, the higher ed space. And then I've modeled a lot of that with black women, you know, that I mentor. And my advice has always, so I love to tell people wear a dress, but that's because I like dresses. (laughs) Not not because it it needs to be, to impress someone. Like when we were coming in today, I was looking at y'all's shoes, right? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, those are so cute. <laughs> and so t- for me, I mean, and maybe it's I don't I didn't always feel this way, but I feel this way now. Be who you are. Like wear the nails, the the bomb make. I like that. I like that highlight. Like <laughs> um, the hair. Be comfortable in who you are because you know you only have to answer to you mm. that and anybody's discomfort really is about themselves mm-hmm. it, it's it's really not about you um I just say, do you? I do. Like when we were at lunch yesterday, and I was talking to Shayla about that picture of collar. Yeah. Like if you're gonna do you, you do gotta be tight, way. right? Yeah, you gotta look good. The whole, you know, head to toe, you gotta look good. But if it means, you know, your feet hurt and you don't want to wear five inch heels, mm-hmm. don't do it. Right. You know, um, I gave that up a long time ago. I'm like, <laughs> I'm walking around here with my colleagues. You know, they outpacing me, walking fast in them damn flats. <laughs> you know, and I'm gonna be trying to keep up in these high heel shoes that you know ain't gonna work. Yeah, them. these. High these high heel shoes aren't writing the articles. They're not writing the books. And so, you know, I'm just, look, wear jeans. Just look good. Question for you, because you Mm -hmm. said, you mentioned something interesting right there. You said you didn't always feel that Mm -hmm. way. Tell me about that a little bit. Tell us about that. Oh, you know, I think some of the socialization in graduate school and just throughout uh, college was a more more about wearing a suit mm-hmm. and wearing heels and always wearing pantyhose mm-hmm. and all of those things. And I'm like, I'm not comfortable in that. You know how you, you're not comfortable with something, but you haven't reconciled mm-hmm. what's wrong with it, right. you know? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and I don't, I just kind of grew into the space where I just didn't. I didn't care. Like, mm-hmm. it wasn't enough to lose me in the process. Right. Like, I'm going to be comfortable. I'm going to be cute, you know. Right. And I feel better mm-hmm. presenting mm-hmm. and talking with people when I feel comfortable. Right. And so I had to start making the process about me right. and not making other people feel comfortable, which right. I, which is, I, I think, many women, women of color, you know, are taught to reduce ourselves yes. so that other people can feel good yes. around us. And yes. I just, yeah. Especially women of color. Yeah. Right. Especially, I used to have this one lady I worked in a law firm and she used to come and tell me if something was low. I don't wear no low. First of all, I don't even have good cleavage. <laughs> so I know I wasn't wearing low uh-huh. cut tops, but if she saw a hint of anything, it was always something. And I feel like a lot of times, and we've kind of touched on this a yeah. little bit, that we kind of put that pressure on, mm-hmm. on ourselves mm-hmm. and each other mm-hmm. as people of color. And half the time, white people don't be paying attention to that kind of stuff because they'll go out looking all kinds of ways. Any kind of Listen, way. They show up any kind I of way. I have been in so many departments where <laughs> What's that on your white jeans? men oh. got t-shirts <laughs> exactly. wearing, just wearing Listen. any kind of old Listen. thing. And I'm like, dang. Now, mm-hmm. if I did that, I'd be exactly. called raggedy and exactly. all of that. Only. But at this point, I'm like, I can do that, mm-hmm. but I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's just now I can make sense of it and talk about it. And before it was like, dang, you know, yeah. that's something not right here. How do I make sense of this? And and now I can, you know, actually articulate it. You Absolutely. really nailed it when you said, uh, you know, the things that we do or don't do to make other people comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, I think for me, one of the things that clicked for me is when I realized that I have to be comfortable with the space that I take up first, yes. right? Mm-hmm. And, and you know, it's just is what it is and I don't have to apologize for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and 
I don't have to explain it. Mm. And people's opinions don't necessarily have to change it. You can be like, oh, your nails are long. Like, that is correct. Mm-hmm. You're right. Yes. Or you don't have no nails. <laughs> right. 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 And, and the thing, you know, the, the part about our own people, you know, this whole idea of respectability politics mm-hmm. and who you need to be. Yeah. Like, I love Cardi B and I love Tiffany Haddish. Yes. I love that they're loud. Yes. I love that they mm-hmm. just do them. You know, mm-hmm. they do themselves and it makes... Other people, uh, sometimes black people feel uncomfortable right. because, yeah. you know, again, a lot of people feel like we need to cater to this white dominant way of being. And I love that they don't. But the thing about it is it's not even a white dominant because it's like we said, white people just do what they want. So it's like, why can't we? That's and I the think, privilege because they operate know, yeah, in the But they got the credibility they exactly. and the, they get the, the benefit of the doubt anyway. They do. Yeah, they and, do. And, you know, black people often feel like we got to be a certain way to just get the benefit of the doubt. Prove, yeah. The proving thing. Yeah. This week at the kitchen table, we are going to talk about the things, you know, as women of particular ages, <laughs> We've learned a lot, you know what I'm saying? And we just want to take some time to reflect. Um, just a little bit. I had the idea. It really just came out of nowhere, punched me in my face out of nowhere. I was just like, what are some, what are some things that I wish that I would have known when I was in my twenties? Um, if I had to give some advice to my 20 year old self, what would I tell her? <laughs> and I thought about it. And instead of me and Jay just talking to our 20 year old selves, we thought it would be super cool if we, um, open up the conversation by asking some of our friends and faves on Twitter to weigh in. Yeah. Uh, so we asked a bunch of our friends and faves who are over 30 um, about what we asked them to kind of send in to us advice that they would give themselves, um, you know, their 20 something year old selves. So we just thought we would share those things and um, generate some discussion about some of the things that we've learned. Over the years. Sound good? Mm-hmm. Sounds like a plan. So you want to start? Sure. Jade's going to start with her advice to her 20-something-year-old Jade. What are you going to tell Jade of yesteryear? Well, first, I'm, t- I'm going to go ahead and title it. It's going to be called So Many Things. <laughs> <laughs> the list. <laughs> I love it. I can't wait. The list is never ending. This is not even everything I would have told my 20 year old self, but here's a couple of things I would have told my, my, my 20 somethings year old selves. All right. Those white BCBG shoes you bought were a waste of money. My God. Don't ever do that again. My God. Your mother was right. You look like you stepped right off the BX9. <laughs> 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 Woo, were they wedges? No, sis, they were full blown hills oh, and they were like, they had God. mesh and they mesh. were like, oh. they were like sneaker like, no. they were, oh my God, they were so ugly. God, they were, they were fugly. Like, they I'm gonna bring fugly back. They were BCBG. Sis, those shoes were fetch. They were never coming in. I don't know what I was thinking about, but I sure did put them on. What are, they were like sporty sneaker what are we hill what are we things. Doing? I wore them with a jersey dress. It's it's fine. You were, it's fine. You were standing squarely in your terrible decision making. I sure was. Those were the times. It's fine. Good times were had by all. Listen to your mom, but don't listen to your mom. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to expound on that. <clears throat> Kia says it a lot every single week, and we've actually gotten a couple of people who have written in, you know, with different questions and things like that. But they'll say it to her. They'll be like, "Girl, like." It's okay. (laughs) It's okay. But your mother, like, listen to her. So many things that she said are going to fly over your head. They're going to go in one ear and write out the other. But somewhere they will get stuck and you are going to remember them later when they come to bite you in your ass. Mm -hmm. So listen to your mother on a lot of things. Even if it sounds sometimes like it doesn't make sense, it's going to make sense. (laughs) Like, just keep but, it in your purse until you need yeah, it. Yeah. Don't like, hold it. You don't have to, like, argue her down and be like, no, no. girl, that ain't it. Sometimes no. that perspective doesn't make sense to you until many, many years down the line. But listen to me. My mother told me her 30s. Oh, sorry. <laughs> technical difficulties over here. My mother told me um, that her 30s were her best years. And... She was like, "Ugh, forget your 20s. Your 30s are your best year. Those were my best years. And I'm seeing now yeah. what she's talking about. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm seeing what she's saying. 
and why, because you will go back on this list that we are, that we're, that we're going into and you're going to appreciate all of the awful decisions that you made because they help you to see how far you've come in the decision making that you have going on right now. But where I said, don't listen to your mom is that we are not our mothers. They were raised in a different time um, and they were raised a different way. And while a lot of the things that they say are for our benefit and we absolutely do need them, you are also your own person. And so therefore there are things that your mother's going to tell you that are also wrong um, or that you don't agree with. And that's okay. It's okay if you want to take certain lessons that she's taught you and maybe remix them a little bit for how you teach your children right. or what you do. And that is okay. As long as you feel like you are doing the best job that you absolutely can and you're staying true to what you truly believe, then that is, that is all right. Okay. So that's why I said, listen to your mom, but don't listen to your mom. <clears throat> that nigga still doesn't count and neither does that one. And that is just fine. Well, <laughs> no arguments here. <laughs> Save your money and categorize your savings. If you want to go on that trip, go, but make sure you have enough to get that timing belt fixed. Mm. Always have a word. Have a little, have a little lump that you need for emergencies, but enjoy your twenties. Like go on your trips Buy the bathing suit you want. Avoid those ugly shoes, mm -hmm. but save your money. Please save your money. Invest your money. Um, in yourself. Like invest in, in yourself your, first. Invest in yourself and in your future. Invest in your retirement. Right now. Invest in your 401k. Right now. Start doing that now. And it doesn't have to be a lot. It can be $20. Especially if your job has a match. Yep. You want to take if full advantage of that. Yep. You don't want to leave none of that money on the table. We'll talk about that later because some of our, you know, friends gave that same advice. But what you will learn is that that money compounds over time. I want everyone to Google. It's called the principle of 72. Just Google it. And it talks about how the money, the money that you save, especially as it relates to interest, it will, yep. it will double, literally double after a certain period of time. If you, you know, apply the principle of 72. Just Google that. It will really, really, uh, shock you how much money you can earn. If it's, if it's $20 a month, if it's $10 yep. a check, it's worth it. Especially if your employer offers a match. Like that's not something yep. you want to sleep on as soon oh, as you can, not. as soon as you can do it. Like I think, and my job didn't have, or maybe I didn't take advantage of it either way. I remember my mother gave me really good advice through my first job. I was like 20, three years old she told me to get an uh, IRA if your job doesn't offer like a 401k or a 403b or something go to your bank or credit union and ask about IRAs Roth That's IRAs it. and just set aside a small denomination of money per month and it'll go yep. in there the interest will compound and you will see you'll see that your money will start to grow I promise yep Yep. And don't touch it. Like put it in something. You can put it in CDs where you're not able to touch right. it for a certain amount of time, but definitely talk to your banks, your credit unions, um, your local institutions, do your research online. Make sure you check out. We'll make sure we put that link in the description box that Kia just right. mentioned, but invest your money and it doesn't have to be a lot. You can pay you piss $20 away. Honestly, literally Every, like, like lunch you really like, do like, right. Yeah. Like for real. So just put that away in savings and watch your money grow. It will certainly grow and you will be shocked. Those nails with the dollar bills on the tips are ugly now, ugly later, and ugly forever and illegal. <laughs> <laughs> that is something I've never done. As someone who gets oh, I certainly did. I never got dollars on my fingers. I never did. Oh my God. Carry on. I'm such a hood rat. I'm a I hood rat. And it, it comes out in other ways, but with that, oh, never again. Mm -mm. Your self esteem was just fine and intact. Never let someone else come in and project their insecurities onto you or dictate what is okay for you. Indeed. Are you happy? That's all that matters. Yes. It's okay that you don't know what you want to do yet. You're going to continue to change all throughout your life and especially during this decade. If you don't want the same thing this time next year or the year after that, it's okay. This too shall pass. It's cliche, but it's honest. The heartache you're feeling right now may come again, and it may not. It may be a little heavier or a little lighter, but you're going to overcome it. And when it passes, baby, ain't nothing like the bounce back. That's true. She's not your friend. And in three years, you won't even remember her name. <laughs> the liquor you drink with your friends is cheap. Don't ask for brandy in the club. 
Oh. And those are just some of the things that I would <laughs> tell. <ask> <laughs> Write that down. <laughs> Write that down. Don't ask for brandy in the club. It's not cute. <laughs> <laughs> Will you order me your first drink? 21. It wasn't even my first drink, but I drank like a nigga. So I was like, y'all got E&J. Oh, and God, they're like, no, who? But... Let me pull out this dusty bottle for this dusty hoe. No. Anyway, sis, let me. <laughs> I want to hear your I drink, list. Like, I wanted all of the cliche. Like, I would like an amaretto sour. <laughs> <laughs> you look like an amaretto sour, girl. Yes, please. With extra cherries. Like, I thought I was doing something. Like, girl, if you don't sit down with this Arnold Palmer, sit down. You're not doing anything. You're not drinking anything. With the cherry. <laughs> like, I thought I was doing something. Don't drink Long Island and don't drink Tokyo Teas, which ain't nothing but Long Island's remixed. Child, be careful. Study your liquor. But I feel like these girls in their 20s are way smarter than we were. And they're a little bit more like past where we were. I, so I hope so. I have faith that the Internet has not ruined them and has saved them. I hope so. Um, So I did mine. I didn't. OK, I just I, I'm going to be real honest. I did not want to do this <laughs> because I have had a rough year. And I know that I say that every episode. Y'all t- probably tired of hearing it, but. I was concerned that my advice to myself would be really negative because of all of the yucky things that I've had to experience these last few months. Um, But I was encouraged to just be open and sit down and just write something to my 20 something year old self. And this is what came out. I'm not. I'm just going to I'm just going to read it. OK, <laughs> so, wait for the gems. So this is what came out. And. We can, I guess, expound if we need to. Hey, Kia, my advice, (laughs) my advice to you is not what you think it will be. I love your podcast. I'm sorry. (laughs) My advice to you is not what you think it will be. Yes, you have to wear your retainers, limit your carbs, (laughs) limit your carbs, get regular pedicures, deep condition every week and drink your water. (laughs) I'm also here to tell you that you will not meet your Dwayne Wayne anytime soon, sis. Y'all won't have a house by age 32 or matching Range Rovers with custom license plates. (laughs) You won't even see most of the things on your vision board in the next 10 years. You might not see them at all. Not because you don't deserve them or you didn't work hard enough. Simply because your thinking is too small. My advice to you is to hold on to what you know to be true about who God is and who you are, because quite frankly, life is going to be hard. You will have to face loss, sickness, disappointment, and heartbreak like you will never believe. You will come face to face with your limitations, your fears, and your insecurities. People will leave you. Your plans will fail you, and you will fail yourself. But through all of that, you will learn who you are. You'll learn to love and appreciate the things that make you you, You'll come to treasure the things that you're not into right now. Yes, girl, even your hips. (laughs) (laughs) Beyond that, the hard things that you will face will stretch you beyond your own expectations and show you your capacities in ways that will both scare and excite you. Be scared and do it anyway. Mm. Mm. Time after time, after time, after time, after time. God will show you that what he has for you is bigger and better than anything that you could have ever planned for yourself. Mm. This is awesome. And while you'll know it, you won't always see it or feel it. And that will frustrate you to no end. Your process will not feel good. And you won't know what the fresh hell is going on in your life about 96% Mm. of the time. And that, that will grate your very last good nerve. Don't trip though. That discomfort will grow your faith strengthen your resolve, and help you to discover the breadth and depth of your value. It will also free you from your propensity to settle for what you think you deserve. It will take time, but keep going. Keep going, Kia, every day. Keep learning, keep singing, keep growing, and keep believing that you're God's favorite daughter. You are precious Mm. to him, and no matter what, he's not going to play you. Even though the hard things, even through the hard things, He will do things to show you that he's got you and that he hears your heart. He will not leave you. He has plans for you that will blow your mind. Trust him. That's it. Shout out to my sis. (laughs) 
I'm so glad I went first. I don't want to follow that. <laughs> I don't know. Um, oh, God. I was trying not to cry. Did you hear my voice shake it? I right. did. That, I heard it. I heard it. It was so hard to do, man. I didn't. I heard it. I did not want to do that. Like, please write that down. I did not want to do that. But. But you know what? You did it, though. You did that. I just want you <laughs> to know, like, I didn't think that I was going to share this right now, but I just feel like I have to. So. After I defended my, after, mm. after I had written my dissertation, which was what I thought was the hardest thing that I ever had to do, I lost my brother. And, um, it, it's still like, it still kind of like makes me want to throw up. Um, because, you know, if he was sick or if there was any way that I could have known, that I would have to live my life without him, I would have been able to be prepared. But it punched me in the stomach in such a way. Um, and my whole life changed, like everything. And I found myself questioning everything about anything that I've ever known. And it's really, really been like this weekend coming, um, he passed on June 11th, but I didn't find out until June 12th. So like this weekend coming, is going to be a year since he passed. And I, I'm telling you, sis, I didn't have any expectation to talk about this, but I know. Um, I didn't want to write to my 20 year old self because it was like, how am I going to tell her? You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you yeah. prepare her for something like this? Because I, I'm still like pretty traumatized. Um, but I just had to tell myself that even though, you know, I've had to face something that's been so heartbreaking, um, I still have to believe that even though my life is not what I thought it would be, that something better is coming. Um, cause that's kind of been like the consistent, like, theme throughout all the challenging things when I was working on my dissertation and thinking like man this is terrible and I know if you've never written a dissertation you probably just like girl it's a big paper it is a big paper but it's a paper that no one's ever ever shown you how to do and no one can tell you how to do it like there's no one formula that says this is how you do it so you're literally like like figuring it out in the dark by yourself and you trying to like find your way to the door so you can get out of this room and you can't get out so I thought that that was the hardest thing that I've ever had to do, but I kept going because I felt like all I needed to do was to get through it. And then once I did get through it, you know, the only brother I've ever had, um, you know, is no longer here with me in the same way. So that's what I'm talking about when I say I've had a rough year um, and my life is not at all what I thought it would be. But even through all of that, I think my advice to my 20 year old self is that you're supposed to have a plan. Have a plan. Um, and work towards your plan. But when your plan changes, don't stop planning. Um, just make another one and, and, you know, try to figure it out from from then on so yeah I think I think that's all I got um but and I don't want to be churchy and preachy that's not who I am you know what I'm saying like I'm a church kid I can't help it all that stuff comes out of me but I'm not here to tell you that you have to do everything just like me I have to I have to like I would be totally remiss and not acknowledging that I would not have been able, I, I, like, I have to trust God. That's just, that's the only way that's worked for me. That's the only way, like, losing somebody. Me and my brother are only 18 months apart, so I never knew life without him. Mm. So, you know, I didn't want to do this because I didn't want it to be all heavy and deep in the middle of the show, but... um. That's that's my advice. You will have to deal with hard things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not telling you to be like, you know, don't be afraid 
and worried and live scared. Live your life and have fun and make plans. But when hard things happen, just know that you can get through them. That's that's basically what I'm trying to say. And it is all funs and ha-has. And I'm super grateful to God yeah. because even through all of my horrible lying, <laughs> he has kept me <laughs> from, do- from being in situations um, and places and dealing with people that I ain't have no business dealing with. I don't. Ooh, I remember. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I so yeah, we can say that. Yeah. Like we talked about that even before we decided we were gonna talk about regrets. We we first said that we were gonna talk about the things that we thought we wanted or the mm-hmm. things that we used to be so passionate about. It's like that's how when we talk in the honesty box and we sound like a bunch of old aunties when we're telling y'all and y'all be all stressed out about these niggas, right? <laughs> so and we understand, right? Because we've all been there. Yes. And there was absolutely a time where I, you know, was hemmed up with some with somebody. Oh my god! And you know, it the situation dissolved for whatever reason, and I was devastated and in my bag. And now I can look back and lift both of my hands <laughs> and tell God, thank you, thank like you. two hands a foot for not let, literally, literally get me like pregnant. all of this. Like you know what, Lord, you had did that. Just want you to know because <laughs> yeah, yes, I dodged the all the bullets. Oh my God, I remember I ended up having to run out of this nigga's house in Bushwick, Woo! down Bushwick in the trenches. Like before Ubers, uh, yeah. down Bushwick Avenue, Still pay phone at on night, the corner. gypsy cabs, <laughs> not running a plentiful like driver. And I'm literally like racing down the street because I was in a very uncomfortable situation in his home. And it's because of my own dumbass. I've, got, I've been there too. Um, my dumbass a- activities and being fast and going over and I didn't do anything and I didn't intend on doing anything but he intended on doing something I've had some of those and I had things. to I had to run going I feel like but those are the lessons that you learned though right Ooh. so it took a long time for me to realize you can't be just letting niggas in your house yeah. <laughs> or you can't be daughter. going to niggas houses you can't be going to niggas houses Listen, you can't be letting niggas in your house the either. rule is that grown folks don't watch movies let me tell you something mm. if y'all haven't heard it before mm. you've heard it here mm. <laughs> when, mm. when the nigga asks you to come over to watch the Hulu <laughs> he ain't trying to watch no Hulu. You no. understand what I'm saying? Netflix and chill came from somewhere. Come on. If a nigga wants to watch a movie with you, he's going to invite you to the Regal Cinemas. Listen. He's going to invite and buy you to you a bag of popcorn <laughs> and a blue <laughs> like, icy, and y'all like, will watch the movie and discuss the movie. That's what, it, that's what it is. I want to see such and such about blah, blah, blah. But nigga, <laughs> if a nigga invites you to the house to see Black Panther, y'all going to Wakanda. <laughs> He wants to give you some vibranium. <laughs> he wants to colonize <laughs> y'all, he, your bag. Y'all, y'all going to Wakanda. Y'all going to Wakanda. Yeah, just going. Pack your bags. Sis. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Act like you ain't going. Act like you ain't going if you want to. Because he has been watching. Because he's been watching <laughs> from the <their> mountains. mountains. <laughs> At your backside. Ready. <laughs> To strip your power away. Ah, the <laughs> so, power of the Black Panther has been stripped away. By the Black Panther. Listen, so I'm just saying. I just want y'all to know. These are real and things. and learn from our regrets and mistakes. We make have to wise have this choices. With Noah. Absolutely. Make wise choices, mm-hmm. right? Regrets are a part of life. They are. But I think the major takeaway is you just got to make sure that you learn from them. Yeah. Think critically. And comprehensively about any tattoo that you get. <laughs> or if Ruben Studdard approaches Hello? you and you curb him. I mean, say hey. Do like I do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if, you happen to like sit, if you happen to sit next to the man of your dreams on the plane, <laughs> say something. <laughs> Shout out to Plane Bay, wherever you are. I dropped the ball. <laughs> Come back. If you're engaged to a nigga <laughs> and you don't feel good about it in your stomach, don't let it go on for nine years. Listen, learn. End it. Learn, honey. There's, pl- there's a sea of dicks out there waiting the for truth. you. And if you're still not comfortable enough where you don't have to lie to your mama, at least tell a, tell friend, a friend where you are. Tell a friend. So that when your details. mama starts looking for you, Toya can be like, uh, Miss Rhonda, um, <laughs> I can't Kim to be was the actually, one. Um, <laughs> she called me and told me she was on her way to uh, <laughs> <laughs> Learn from me. Yeah. Write down your friend's license plates. You know, if they drive off with some, Drop a pen. Like, use to find your friend's app. Just 
Be um, safe and be smart. And most importantly, stay prayed up. <laughs> stay prayed up. <laughs> and give God thanks because he will keep you when you don't want to be kept. And I'm if you witness. really need to tell somebody, <clears throat> always pray. And you can always tell your grandma if you still have her in your life because she's not going to remember what you say. <laughs> so My grandma will. Ciao. She my, won't forget. My nothing. grandma will be mixing up all kinds of uh become mixing up all kinds of information. So my grandma she might forget. <laughs> she might forget and tell me twice, but she's not gonna forget. I said it. Do you find that there are things that you would like to do differently than your mother? Like, do you find that there are certain habits that you have that you might have picked up from her that you you actually try to fight against because it's not necessarily something that, you know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if it's a habit of my mom's. Mm-hmm. Uh and I think well, like even like a thought process or whatever. Yeah. So two things come to mind. The first mm-hmm. one being uh, my mom was outstanding, amazing, excellent mom. Like she wrote for me and my brother without question, without a doubt. And I will always appreciate that for her. And I've never been a mom, so I don't know if this is just what you're supposed to do. But I really wish that my mom would have found a way to learn to balance maintaining some sense of herself outside of being Kia and Brian's mom. Because, you know, both my brother and I noticed that as we became adults, um, because, you know, she had literally thrown herself like completely into being our mom. I mean, she worked and she had a career and everything. Um, But aside from being, you know, career, having her career and being a mom, I don't know that, and I don't want to speak for her, but just from my perspective, I really wish that she would have found a way to balance and find time to cultivate some of her passions and talents. Um, Mm -hmm. In ways that would not only feed her spirit and, but would also like, I would have liked to see my, my mom is a super talented, like creative person. And mm. it was just something that she did as a hobby. And I really felt like it's something that she could be doing to like, like it could be her career. Um, she's retired. So she's works. She works now to just kind of, you know, occupy her time and kind of keep, you know, money coming in. But, um, my mom is a master seamstress. Like when my parent, my grandparents renewed their vows oh. for their 50th, my mom made all the bridesmaid dresses. Um, oh. like, li- like literally nine of them. And Yo. she, she does all these fabulous window treatments and she makes beautiful floral arrangements. And like, she's just got a knack for like home decor and doing mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. And I have always wished that she would feel that I'm like that could be like a huge thing like and I'm trying to I've tried to really tell her I've tried to tell her and show her that you can mm-hmm. do this and like make money like you could do this and like sustain yourself you wouldn't have to go into that job and let them people fry your nerves every day um, right. but I really wish that you know and I think it's also a generational thing but a habit that I'm trying to make for myself is to always avail myself of options and to Cultivate my passion in a way that it not only feeds my spirit and my soul, but it's also, you know, a resource Mm -hmm. that I can, you know, you know, it's an additional source of income, a source to sustain myself and my family. So I wish that I could, if she, I mean, lots of things happen, you know, she was doing it by herself. So it could have just been over, you know, bandwidth, not having the time or the bandwidth or the energy to, Mm -hmm. to take on something else. So I get it. So I'm, this is not me judging her, but I just wish that and hope that going forward, I can kind of find a way to do that better. Um, and the second thing really deals with not being so skeptical and Mm. afraid because I feel like, Mm -hmm. The anxiety and stress and stuff that I carry is it's a lot of that I, I feel like I have because I watched my mom. And granted, she's dealt with a lot of hard things. I hope I please don't tell her. This is why y'all can't tell her about this show because she gonna be like, yeah. Why you tell her the whole world about business? You can't tell mine today either. <laughs> Like anyway, but oh, uh, you know, she's dealt with some really hard things, and she's made it through, and she's amazing. But um, I think that that those experiences 
hardened her in a way. Um, and she raised me to be tough. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and that toughness sometimes is at odds with the parts of me that, you know, is afraid and is vulnerable. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so I constantly have this conflict where I'm like, you know, I'm a G. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. You do what you right. got to do. Uh, and it's got to be done. So, you know, and then that part of me who just wants to be like, but I need help. So, so um, I wish that and I hope that, you know, that's something that I, I definitely feel like I picked up from her. And I know that that's probably something that a lot of people can say. But, um, yeah, I I wish that I could. And, you know, going back to what we talked about a little bit last week during Black Women's Self-Care just trying to like manage my stress, my emotions, my thought life mm-hmm. better because, you know, you get different responsibilities, much is given, much is required. And to quote Diddy right after and Biggie, right after I quote the Bible, <laughs> more money, <laughs> more money, more problems, more opportunities, more problems. So like the more things that are on your plate, the more awesome opportunities that you have, you're always going to have more and more things to deal with on the back end of that. So, yeah. you know, finding better ways to manage all of that is really a season that I'm in. So mm-hmm. that's something we're probably going to continue to talk about on the show because I'm figuring it out or trying to every day, literally. But yeah, that's, def- that's definitely something we're going to touch on very, very soon because I am in the same space. <laughs> but I guess some of the things that I find that I would like to do differently than my mother um some of them come in just how I how I parent my own child uh she has taught me so many valuable things just like you're you you know you spoke about your mother she's taught me so many valuable things and you know so many things that I'm going to continue to take with me and things that I think about later on that I'm like that's why she said that and you know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying like I really value a lot of what she what she's taught me and, and what she's taught me through action but I also find some of some of her her ways to be things that I would want to change. Um, my mom was super paranoid and distrusting, like I touched on earlier, to the point where it made me uncomfortable to talk to her about things that I should have mm-hmm. been more comfortable talking to my mother about. Same. So I'm going to tell you all a super personal story. Mm-hmm. Right. So I was 16. And um, I got I, th- I had antibiotics. I got sick for whatever reason. And I was on antibiotics. So it was my very first yeast infection. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I didn't really realize that antibiotics, sweat, you know, cleaned everything out of your body to the point where, um, you know, you needed to. You needed to balance that out with some probiotics like the Internet was not as prevalent then as it is now. So it wasn't as easy to Google and all of that. So I kind of had to figure it out. And I was afraid to go to my mother and tell her what was going on because I knew the very first thing out of her mouth was going to be what you've been doing. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting here trying to deal with this myself. I'm doing all kinds of foolish things with yogurt and and, and so forth and so forth. Oh, my God. (laughs) And listen, it is what it is. And um, and then finally I went to her because it just got to the point where it was unbearable. And I was like, listen, this is what's going on. And she was like, what you been doing? Man, see, and I knew at this point that it was the antibiotics because I'd spoken to my grandmother about it. And my grandmother told me that antibiotics did the same thing to her and that they do it to a lot of women when it cleans your body out. Like that's a common side effect. So I'm like, OK. So I went to my mother, you know, to try to resolve it. And she <laughs> that was the first thing that came out of her mouth. And it was always instances like that where it was like. I don't want to come to you because you are not going to be empathetic or understanding to what I'm talking to you about. You're like, you're not going to be able to put your motherly feelings to the side enough to be able to talk some sense to me. Now, not not saying that she didn't talk a a lot of real shit to me because she did. But at the same time, it was always that type of reaction that came along with certain things. And I want to make sure that with me mothering Noah, especially having a daughter, God, this is my karma, Mm -hmm. uh, (laughs) that. I don't make her feel uncomfortable in coming to me and talking to me about, 
you know, certain things that may be going on with her, how she's feeling. I don't ever want her to, to get to that point where she's paranoid to come talk to me. And so that's where I have to constantly check myself and my reactions to her, even now as a toddler. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like this is going to carry on as I continue to parent her. And so I have to try to shake those habits now. Mm -hmm. Um, and those are things that are ingrained in me because they're, they're, they're taught from how I was raised. You never really realize until you get older how you were raised right. affects you so much. And I'm like really coming into that now. I'm really in that stage where I'm like, damn, the way that you're raised really for real, for real, like fucks with you. <laughs> like it really, mm -hmm. it really plays a huge part in who you become as a person, no matter how much you try to fight it. And so there are things that we have to, there are habits that we have to try to like fight against actively um, that we pick up. And it's okay if there are habits that you have, or there are thought processes or patterns or whatever that you have that you might want to change from your mother. It doesn't mean that your mother was a bad mother. It just means that you want to do things a little bit differently. You want to tweak it a little bit. And we've touched on that before, but I know you know, I know that I felt guilty about that in the past for not wanting to do things exactly like my mother. And I don't feel guilty about that anymore. I've kind of come to, you know, come to peace with the fact that, you know, a lot of what she's taught me is super useful and I want to pass that on. But it's OK for me to start some of my own traditions and my own, you know, my own healthy thinking in my family. So this week's episode is also brought to you by Timmy. The Teamy Blends Detox Mask is the perfect mask for all skin types, helping to eliminate blemishes, improve overall complexion, and moisturize your skin from the inside out. You all know how important it is to moisturize your skin from the inside out. Starting with the inside is all is is super key. Now I have oily skin. Kia has dry skin. Um, and we're both able to use the mask. It's absolutely wonderful. I've tried it as a full-blown mask. It's helped to reduce pores. It leaves my skin feeling tingly and beautiful. It smells amazing. I feel like I'm at in, in the spa. And then on top of that, I've also used it as a spot-free treatment for like little blemishes and things that get on my last nerve. So I'm 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 hip. I'm loving it. Timmy's Detox Mask is it for me. There's a lot of skincare products out there that look cool, but they never actually work. The Detox Mask is a perfect mask to add to your routine because it works regardless of your skin type. I told you all about this oily and key is dry. Um, the Detox Mask is all natural and made with a blend of ingredients like matcha tea, bentonite clay, and lemongrass. So it feels great and it smells like a spa. What did I tell y'all? And it's easy to use. Simply leave the mask on for 10 minutes and feel your skin tingling while the mask works its magic. Once it dries, wash it off and reveal clean, hydrated, happy skin. You can even use it as a spot treatment. I mean, are you guys like listening to what I'm saying? Do you see how these people are copying me? I use it on my little pimples. I literally just used it on one last night. Anyways, you can use it as that spot treatment. Go ahead, get your life. Look glowing for 2019. Get into this Teamy Detox Mask. You can do that by going to teamyblends.com and add the Detox Mask to your beauty routine today and use the code GROWN25 for 25% off all orders of $24.99 and up. That's T-E-A-M-I-B-L-E-N-D-S dot com and code GROWN25. Get your life glow. Honestly? Truly. Honesty box time. <laughs> Hola, Jade Ikea. That's for Jade. <laughs> oh, Jesus I love how you all are peace. Oh, Please God. call me Janny. I'm a 27-year-old virgin. I often wonder all how right. I made it this far because TBH, curiosity can kill the cat. <laughs> oh, yes. And it's getting to that point. I've always wanted Mama. to save myself from marriage, but now I don't see the point. Life is short. Oh. The guy I'm kind of seeing, see below. Please do not read the story on the air. <laughs> oh, we God. Won't. Said, give me your body and I will give you my soul and everything else. So we ah, talked about marriage. Wait. <laughs> wait. <laughs> what? <laughs> wait, I'm sorry. I'm not mature enough. Let me. I'm going to be quiet. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Hold on. Wait a second. Okay. The guy I'm kind of seeing <laughs> said, give me your body and I will give you my soul. And everything else when we talked about marriage. Oh, Jesus. I Christ. told him we should go to counseling first. He said he wouldn't need oh. counseling after I give myself to him. A part of me oh, believes him, but a part of me believes he's going. This is a trap. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I just, <laughs> girl, I am. I don't feel comfortable with this language he's using, but I'm sorry. I need to let you finish. <laughs> what is this? I'm seeing so many problems while I'm reading it. Okay. I told him <laughs> we should go to counseling first. He said he wouldn't need counseling after I give myself to him. <laughs> A part of me believes it, but a part of me, no, don't. But a part of me believes he's going to up and leave. So here's the thing. I want to move in with him because I can live in a one bedroom, making the rent cheaper <sighs> than finding another roommate. And I can still have my freedom. All of this isn't for freedom, but I'm also taking prereqs to get into med school. So I need to save money. Shout out to the two debt free degrees. I have an education that I don't want to use. I quit hmm. my teaching job to protect my mental health and found a job as a medical scribe so that I can get the required medical service hours needed to be a competitive candidate for med school. Of course, my mom wants me to move home, but I feel like I would be stopping my life doing things for all of my family and not have time to do things for me. I'm extremely confident. I'm able to abstain while sharing living quarters. But what would you do? Ah! <laughs> uh, gracias para tu tiempo, Jenny. My, my, my. Jay just loves to speak in Spanish. Oh, my God. <laughs> Janny, girl, first of all, why are you dating Count Dracula? Okay, because <laughs> why does he talk like that? That nigga is like, why? <laughs> Keep counting. Ah, ah, to ah, give ah, yourself ah. to me. Give me your body <laughs> and I will give you my soul. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> I am wholly uncomfortable with this, <laughs> with this line. I don't feel comfortable with this at all because why is he talking to you? Like this I'm is some going creepy bit. I will be right here after you give yourself to me. No, <laughs> that's not how this works. I don't know. Maybe I'm just no, creeped out, but I'm just it. like, I don't feel comfortable with this. Jenny, first of all, let me tell you, let me tell you 72 things. Number one, if you decide to give yourself to the count <laughs> and y'all do decide to move in together, I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to be doing anything other than having copious amounts of relations with the Count Dracula <laughs> for months. Like, so, I mean, I just feel like you just need to be conscious of, you know, just, just, just think you know, comprehensively about all the, like, just consider all, wake up all the nigga, dimensions. This nigga's going to be standing over you at some point. This is what I'm saying. So I just feel like, <laughs> I think that is, it is laudable for you to think that you moving in with him makes so much sense for your life. And I think it's easy to think about these things, but just uh in these ways, right? We can kind of like hope and, you know, it just makes sense in our mind. But I feel like what you how you think this might go may look very different than how it actually might go. And then you talk about um, how if you want, you might not have time when you, for yourself, when, if you move back home because your family is going to occupy your time. Who's to say this nigga's not going to occupy your time? What if he's filthy right. and you don't wash dishes and you got to spend time? Or like, yeah, like relationships are, relationships occupy your right. time and they occupy your time all the more when you guys are in a cohabitative situation. Right. Um, it's not going to be a situation where, you know, I mean, I just, just there's just a lot of things to consider in terms of how things will change for you, um, given all the, like, it's just a lot of stuff that's up in the air right now, right? You don't know how things are going to change if you decide to have sex, if you don't. Like, any decision that you make could potentially change the nature of your relationships right. and the way that you engage with him. Um and that will have implications for whether or not you decide to live together, which will have implications for your plans for medical school, all these other things. So I'm not here to tell you um, what you should or should not do, but you asked my opinion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, there's just not enough information here that I feel comfortable enough saying, you know, that you should or should not do these things. So I guess what I'm saying is I'm, I'm just hopefully giving you things to consider mm -hmm. that will be help that will help you in making your decisions. Uh, and in those things to consider, I'm telling you the things that make me uncomfortable. It's most specifically the, the, the way that he <laughs> talks about y'all having sex. Give like that whole, give me, give me, did you hear how, give. did you hear how instantly triggered? I was instantly I triggered it. by that. I, hate it I was so like, much. 
Oh, oh no. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> that sounds so uh uh-uh. uh. I don't like that at all. No That's way. Like when I was dating this like the first time I dated a Caribbean man, Lord Jesus, I should have learned my lesson. Um <laughs> let me stop. Uh this dude bought me some dog tags. Like like Oh God, you told me this thing. It was like property of Chris. Huh? And I was like, Well, what? And my mother saw it. My mother was like, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, you are property of nobody." <laughs> <laughs> but one thing I want Ooh, you, to, Jenny, I want you to th- also one thing I want you to think about in a, in addition because I one thousand percent agree with everything Kia said. I had the privilege of reading this email beforehand, so I got all <laughs> of my reactions to your to to you to your partner. Yeah, that was that was his, my first run. His ridiculous language usage, um, but. I want you to think about this. You are a virgin and you have saved yourself. And that is something that's very special. A person who truly cares about you and loves you um, and will really be there for you after you, quote unquote, give yourself. (laughs) I don't like it. I'm uncomfortable. I am Um, so uncomfortable. Because in a, I mean, in all reality, in all seriousness, you are giving a gift. That is your gift. You know what I'm saying? That's something that you're never going to be able to give again. It's something you're never going to be able to take back. Somebody who truly loves you is going to respect um, your needs surrounding such a heavy decision. And if you came to this young man and said, listen... Like, you know, I, I hope that you and I'm 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 assuming that you have expressed yourself to him and how you feel about sex. Obviously, um, he knows where you stand if you guys have not had sex. So we're going to assume all of that. But if you go to him and let him know, I think we should go to counseling. Like It will make me feel better if we do that. That's not some. you're not saying that you all need to go rob a bank together. Like you're saying something positive. And if he yeah, can, I mean, she's saying she wants to go like because. I'm guessing that it's premarital counseling. Did you get that? I'm thinking because she was saying this relationship counseling. I don't couples therapy. I'm not sure. I just in that realm. But if that's what you ask for and that's not something very big to ask for and that's something that's going to make you feel better and he can't respect that one thing. That's something to really think about. That's all I'm saying. You asked our opinion. My opinion is I wouldn't do it. And those are the reasons why <laughs> everything Kia said in that, because there is a level of respect um, that somebody's going to have for you who loves you and they're going to respect your needs. And if that's something that you need, because this is such a weighted thing and he can't do that, you really should really, you know, really just take that into consideration. I mean, she said, she said in an email that she's confident that she can abstain while sharing living quarters. And I mean, I'm not, I'm not as too much worried about you, but I'm, I left, I'm, I'm not confident that he can abstain right. <laughs> uh, while sharing living quarters, especially if, you know, you propose counseling. Um, I mean, it would be, it would have been nice to know exactly what would be the purpose behind the counseling, whether that be if you guys want to work toward you know, if, see if marriage was in the cards or you just wanted to speak to a counselor around your abstinence or, you know, just kind of laying out what that was. Uh, but either way, his response is, you know, he, him saying y'all would need count, like sex is not going to be the great fantasy. It's not. Like if y'all are having relationship answer. issues, yeah, sex is not going to alleviate or, you know, you know, there, there's not going to be quite any the opposite. It is Pandora's Actually, box. about to say, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. It, it will absolutely make matters worse. Absolutely, it will. <laughs> um, absolutely and, I, and I'm speaking from a place of experience. experience so, honey. so um, <laughs> yeah, if if that's what you're thinking, um, I, I would just, I would offer you that. <laughs> and we're not laughing right at there. you through this. So we don't want yeah. you to think that we are laughing at your nigga, though, because <laughs> <laughs> the count. Keep counting. Ah, 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 um, but we do. We do sincerely. Every, all of our listeners, we sincerely care about all of you. And we take your honesty box questions very serious. And um, we offer, you know, truly what we feel. And we just, you know. Beloved, it just don't sound like a good idea. 
And it sounds like yeah, I'm uncomfortable. a whole lot that you need to be thinking about. It just doesn't sound like the move. And another thing, too, is you're getting ready to move into a space, a one bedroom apartment where you're sharing a bed, an intimate space with this person Ooh. day in and day out. Like, what makes you think that you're getting ready to have your you time like that? Not saying that it's not possible, not saying I don't get me time because I'm married, but I just everything around this just doesn't sound like a great idea. It just it just doesn't sound like a great idea. And that's just my opinion on it. So I hope that you think about uh, everything that Kia said. And I hope you know, some of the stuff that I said. <laughs> and you, No, all the stuff that Jake said too. You take those things into consideration and it helps you to make a sound decision. And sometimes the decision is not always what you want it to look like. I know it's not ideal for you to move back in with your parents. and But you know, think about the consequences of going in the in the other direction. And I want to be very responsible of the things I say to my sister. Because everybody know I can be real petty. P-E to the T-T-Y, honey. honey. <laughs> Got my costume all ready for the parade. Let's go. Um, so I y'all know that I don't lie. I said this before. I get frustrated. I get in my bag when people ask me how to do something that they see me doing. Whether that be like walking the hills or typing really fast or, you know, I know where this operating is and maneuvering and, and existing in my life with my with my with my nails or mm-hmm. eyelashes or what have you. You know, niggas love to be like, how you do that? How you do that? How you walk in them shoes? Yeah, I know we've talked about this. I don't want to rehash. But I, how I, you whip your ass <laughs> from front to back? Huh, oh, it's, it's just wear me down. <laughs> I, I shared this on Twitter today because I I feel like we do a lot of assuming, and that joint burns my grits. It just gets them all clumpy and lumped up and mm. burnt on the bottom. I hate it. Mm, um, it's funky. I think that we assume, like we assume that because, like you know, women with short hair have short hair because they can't grow hair. We assume. We assume that women who have long nails have fake long nails. We assume that um, that uh, women who wear makeup uh, uh, have self-esteem issues or are uncomfortable with themselves. Mm-hmm. And I just wish that we would all mind our business. Like <laughs> We don't know. Mm-hmm. If you don't know something, then you shouldn't speak on something that you don't know anything about. Mm-hmm. And I just, mm-hmm. I just, I'm, I get, I grow tired of the assumptions. I feel like day to day I'm confronted with with assumptions people have full-fledged positions they have beliefs belief systems and, and mindsets about me and have never had a conversation with me and that just makes me want to fight it does it makes yeah. me want to fight because it's like you reach that conclusion all by yourself and that's not fair because you're not out here keeping it to yourself if i heard about it that means you're out here running your mouth and i would thank you to if you can't come to me and say something to keep your trap shut that's all. And it could be something as simple as simple and, and, and insignificant as the length of my nails. Right. Mm. Like mm. or it could be something as big as the, the type of person I am or, or you know, mm. my character or how I engage with people or if I engage with people. I just wish that people would just not make mm. assumptions specifically about me. Right. <laughs> I hate it. Mm. Um, and I, I mean, it's, it's good though. It's, I mean, I guess what I'm trying to, the silver lining that I'm trying to find in this is I've been asking the Lord, like to, to teach me like, okay, what I'm supposed to learn through these lessons, because this keeps happening in my life. It keeps getting on my nerves. So I need to know how, what I need to take away from this so that I can hopefully move past and move forward. And I feel like the Lord is showing me the ways that I make assumptions about other people and it's helping me to check that behavior. So Yeah. Long story less long is that my petty peeve is if you have a question or if you have an opinion, at least at least run it past me or ask or even not me. Somebody who knows me, try to confirm this or give me the benefit of the doubt before you run tell that no matter what it is, (laughs) before you get out on the Internet or in the street or in the choir stand or at the gas station or at Target and fix your face to say anything concerning me, <laughs> just just yeah. check yourself. before, <laughs> Because I'm trying to stay in character. I'm trying to be a Christian, but I'm not a killer, but don't push me. 
Don't push me. Because I'll go. It's, it's always the ashy niggas, too. I, it was a bunch of ashy niggas on Twitter one day who were talking about women who wear makeup. You know, like you said, now it, they're insecure, they're ugly, whatever. They just had so many opinions about women who wear makeup. And I was like, all of you all need to shut the fuck up because your mothers forgot to rub your heads. <laughs> they're funny shaped. They're not shaped. And you hide your funny, misshapen heads. shaped heads with fitteds. So you have no room to talk about anybody. Be quiet. Nobody asks about your opinion. And furthermore, let me, I would also like the record to reflect that a lot of these niggas who are out here preaching the gospel against makeup have beards. And let me tell you, they look like James Harden. There is nothing, and we all know James Harden listen, is facially deficient. And there is nothing more deceiving than a beard. <laughs> nothing. Mm. Nothing. Nothing. A, a fitted. Nothing. A fitted is also deceiving. Well, a fitted and a, and a beard combination is just like witness protection. I don't even know who you are. Oh, sis, I don't, I, I don't even know who you chance. are. Who are you? I don't know you. You <laughs> are a hologram. You're a Decepticon. You're a transformer. <laughs> Get out of my face. You want to be in here talking about somebody wearing some concealer and you out here with a full be- a beard and a fitted will make a whole yeah. new nigga. <laughs> Just like that. A whole, because as soon as they shave their face, you be like, ah, who the fuck are you? <laughs> it's, like, who's, it's like somebody turned the lights on in the club. <laughs> Like I did not go. I did not agree to go on a date with Sam Cassell. <laughs> what does it all mean, Jesus? But yes, uh, that's all. That was my. Be out here fraudulent as Listen, hell. Who gave me counterfeit out here with a, be- a Beijing? Just, uh, a fuck- Finish, I can't. A beard. I can't. You are not the same person, I'm sir, tired. that you were before I'm that. I'm tired. <laughs> and you be wearing these Tims to give you that extra inch and a half. You out here in a full five seven. <laughs> Leave me alone. Leave me alone. You hear me? I've seen the episode of Seinfeld where George refused to take off his Tims <laughs> because he knew they gave him height. I can't. <laughs> so that's all I'm saying. It, it's given. Let this. I'm taking this as a lesson. If y'all want to join me in this lesson, I've learned. I've started to check myself and start to give people the benefit of the doubt before I just be out all here outlandish with my opinions that have that have not been confirmed. <laughs> because I'm tired of people coming back to me. Oh, I thought. Oh, I heard that you X Y Z and one two three and and. 23, 24, 25. And I'm just like, I don't know where you got that from because the lie detector test has determined that that is a lie. That is a lie. You are not the father. You are not the father. I'm over here dying because I... (laughs) I remember in my single days when niggas would approach me at Tim's mm. and I will always take two inches Listen, off. Listen, you just got to do it. <laughs> you got to do it. I'm like, oh, so you're really I remember one time, oh my gosh, I met I met this guy in the club. Well, we was out and I had on a shoe. I was in the club and right. I was in the club. I had on a shoe. These are the days, honey. These are the days. This is like 23 to age 23 to 27 Kia who was in a pump five days oh, a week. Kia. I was like, where you can hurdle and see Absolutely. you can hurdle and I was out inch. here jumping double dutch. <laughs> like, whatever. Yes. What you need? I got you. Now my ankles yeah. be looking at me like, sis, be seated <laughs> in the tired. presence of God. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so I met him and I was out, right? So the next time we got together, I had on a sneaker. Mm -hmm. So I kid you not, that nigga opened the door and saw that I was like shorter. Like he saw that in my shoe. I mean, in my, in my sneaker, he was taller than me. That nigga was like, yes. Woo. Yeah. He was like, it was a full (laughs) celebration mode. And I was like, you know what? (laughs) <laughs> he, I want, he danced like he Martin, was like, like Martin. Oh, he was like, I knew it, I knew it, I knew I was taller than you, I knew it. He was encouraging himself the whole time. It was that little Martin jig right before he got married, where he did I that said, little. You know what, guys? Leave us alone. Through good times and bad times, knowing you can always count. No, it's on I'll be on your side. Oh, you just yeah. mix, you just mix both of <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. You're right. I'll be on your side forevermore. Forevermore. That's what friends are for. <laughs> I remember when, when I always love how Gladys comes in. 
<laughs> Gladys can do no wrong. Keep shining. Come yes, on, Gladys. Yes, yes. <laughs> no, you can always count on me. Sing, Gladys. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> Gladys just runs our legendary. Why do you sound just like <laughs> Because I've always wanted to be Gladys Knight. Woo! They say, Gladys, you know you work too hard. Gladys is. Oh my gosh. She's Love right there. Un- <laughs> yes. She's right there under under Patty. Like, she is. Woo! She is. Like those are the aunties. Patty, Gladys, and Anita. Like that's like a little Oh that's man. a collective for me. That's a collective. But anyway. I gotta see Gladys live. Okay. All right. I'm gonna start. Um I, I can't even tell Ty not to put that in because he's disrespectful. He probably gonna do it anyway. He don't listen to me. We know you, Ty. <laughs> And that was the last episode of the year of Getting Grown. And I didn't even get to have Kia here. To, I did not get to troll her. I don't get to like, it's not as fun when you don't have somebody here to to like purposely try to get on their nerves. So it's just you guys. It's just me and you. And I don't get to see your reaction. So again, it sucks the fun out of it. <laughs> but <laughs> once again, we say thank you. We can't say thank you enough. Um, and as we go into this new year, I mean, y'all know what it is. Drink your water, moisturize your skin and, uh, fucking dick. How did I forget my own shit? What the fuck? Mind your business. Drink your water, moisturize your skin. Oh, and mind your business. God damn it. Okay. Ty. Boom. Cut all that out. And you all know what we say. Mind your business, moisturize your skin and drink your water. Because your black will crack if it's dry. That was all out of order, but it's fine. It's the new year, and we scramble eggs out here. I'll see you next year, my niggas. Bye.